at all times relevant to this indictment unless otherwise indicated the defendants and relevant entities safeman us llc a limited liability company registered in utah together with its subsidiaries and affiliate safeman held itself out as a technology and blockchain company in operation for march to June 2023, SafeMoon issued a digital asset called SafeMoon Token, which was first minted or generated in or about March 2021. The defendant, Braden John Crony, also known as John Crony and Capital Captain Hoddle, <clears throat> worked for SafeMoon in various times. He held himself out as the chief executive officer. The defendant, Kyle Nagy, also known as SafeMoon Dev, worked for SafeMoon and was the initial developer of SafeMoon. The defendant, Thomas Smith, also known as Papa, worked for SafeMoon and held himself out at various times as the chief technology officer of SafeMoon. I honestly think that uh, this, I don't even know, it's just my opinion, probably wouldn't have happened if CoffeeZilla <coughs> and uh, Bootsy and those guys didn't. It might have happened, but it might have taken a lot longer. But I think that because CoffeeZilla brought all this information out with Bootsy and the other guy, that this probably led to this happening a lot faster, which is awesome. And I bet CoffeeZilla is working on another video right now to kind of be like, I, I told you so. Um, digital asset or digital token refers to an asset that is used. Okay, that's not super interesting. Safe and was decentralized finance. Digital asset launched in March 2021 that subsequent, subsequently reached a market capitalization of more than $9 billion. Uh, let's get to the good stuff. That's just explaining like terms and stuff as described for the below safeman and the defendants john crony kyle Nagy, and thomas smith together with others created and or operated a series of websites and published white papers describing safeman's token supply uh, the properties of safeman token and its utility to investors investors who purchased safeman thus relied on the representations and efforts of safeman and the defendants, John Caroni, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith, to provide liquidity to the market for SafeMoon by controlling the underlying SafeMoon smart contracts that in turn control the SafeMoon liquidity pools. SafeMoon, via the defendant, John Caroni, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith, uh, marketed to investors that through the operation of SafeMoon smart contracts, transactions, and SafeMoon will automatically be subject to a 10% tax, meaning, for example, that if a holder of SafeMoon transferred SafeMoon, uh, the first 5% tranche of, I don't even know what that word is, of the tax proceeds would be reflected back to and distributed among all SafeMoon holders in proportion to their current SafeMoon holdings. In effect, through this reflection, a holder of SafeMoon would see their SafeMoon balance automatically increase each time any user transferred SafeMoon. The remaining 5% SafeMoon tax proceeds would be deposited into designated SafeMoon liquidity pools. This is the actual indictment for anybody who's tuning in late. Um, the larger the SafeMoon liquidity pool, the greater the liquidity in the market for SafeMoon. Through the execution of SafeMoon smart contracts, half of the SafeMoon tax proceeds were automatically used to increase the supply. Investors in SafeMoon thus relied on SafeMoon and defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith to ensure that the 10% tax on SafeMoon transactions they had advertised to the marketplace would be, in fact, assessed and collected for their benefit. We talked about, we went over this so heavily. Coffee went over this so heavily. Like I went over this so heavily that the liquidity, and we, we looked at it on the blockchain, we, we, we couldn't have made it any more clear. The liquidity that was meant for us, that's just our liquidity, was used and and taken. Uh, that was our liquidity. <clears throat> Most commonly used SafeMoon liquidity pools were collections of SafeMoon and another more widely known digital asset, BNB. Using the SafeMoon liquidity pools, a trader could swap SafeMoon for BNB or vice versa in a decentralized manner. SafeMoon was also marketed as a deflationary token, meaning that its circulating supply or float would decrease over time as the developers manually burned or destroyed SafeMoon on the blockchain, thereby removing them from the available supply of SafeMoon. As a result, investors in SafeMoon looked to and relied on the efforts of SafeMoon and the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith to, to decrease the float of SafeMoon over time, which would by definition increase the value of SafeMoon for those investors. The criminal scheme. From at least in or about March 2021 through April 2023, the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith, together with others, perpetrated a series of fraudulent schemes to defraud current and prospective SafeMoon investors by making materially false statements and promises concerning SafeMoon and omitting material information from their statements that rendered them false and misleading. Among other things, Crony, Nagy, and Smith represented to investors that SafeMoon relied on locked liquidity pools that would automatically increase in size due to the 10% tax on every SafeMoon transaction. The locked SafeMoon liquidity pool prevented Crony, Nagy, and Smith and other insiders at SafeMoon from being able to rug pool. And, and you know, SafeMoon and Maxis, they're like, oh, it, it's not a rug pull if it doesn't, if all of it isn't rugged, then it's not a rug pull. It's like, no, if any of it's rugged, it's a rug pull. If you pull out $1, that you rugged the liquidity for a for dollar. Um, that's called a slow rug pull when you do it over a long period of time. I wonder if John's going to be in jail the rest of his life. 
and, and Thomas, these guys, these guys are not very old. I mean, if you get 20 years, you're, you're probably not living too pat, you know, too far past 50, 60. You know, most people are not making it too far these days. The tokens and liquidity pool would not be used to enrich the safe and developers, including Crony, Nagy, and Smith. And Crony, Nagy, and Smith would manually add tokens to pair the safe and liquidity pool. Not only safe for their personal benefit, the representations were materially false. In addition, although they publicly denied that they personally held or traded Safeman, Crony, Nagy, and Smith repeatedly bought and sold Safeman for their personal benefit, including the height of Safeman's market price, which generated millions of dollars in profits. The initial minting, marketing, and sale of Safeman to investors, the first fraudulent removals. This is all, if you guys want to read this. The initial minting, marketing, and sale of Safeman to investors and the first fraudulent removals of liquidity. Uh, on March 1st, 2021, the defendant, Kyle Nagy, minted one quadrillion Safeman tokens on the Binance Smart Chain. As a part of the minting process, Nagy received these Safeman into a wallet publicly referred to as the Safeman Protocol Deployer, Safeman Deployer Wallet, which Nagy owned and controlled. After minting Safeman, Nagy used a digital asset offering service to make 777 trillion Safeman tokens available for sale to investors on be beginning on March 2nd. On or about March 2nd, the defendant Kyle Nagy caused the initial Safeman liquidity pool to be funded with 60. Okay, so I'm actually going to skip because we already know about Kyle. Like, there's no disagreement on Kyle. There's no disagreement on Thomas. On March, uh, okay, actually, John Crony and Thomas Smith joined Safeman and marketed Safeman to investors based on material misrepresentations. In or about mid March 2021, the defendant Kyle Nagy recruited defendants John Crony and Thomas Smith to join the Safeman project, and they continued marketing Safeman directly to investors and prospect prospective investors, including to investors and prospective investors in the Eastern uh, District of New York. Uh, Crony assumed the title of CEO, and Smith assumed the title of uh, CTO. <laughs> oh man, this is just so funny looking back. After joining Crony and Smith, worked up to uh, worked to update Safeman's public-facing websites and white papers, and communicated with current prospective Safeman investors using, among other things, channels, social media, and chat rooms, and live stream video Safeman Ask Me Anything sessions. Um, this is another thing I just want to say real quick: is Jonas. And like, I'm, I'm cool with people. I don't mean to like put people on blast, but I kind of have to put you on blast. Uh, recently posted something saying that Safeman wasn't FTX and that it, but it wasn't a well-run company. He was just trying to make it sound like it was just incompetence running the company. But now John and Thomas are in jail right now. <laughs> They've been arrested and uh, the SEC has gone after them for fraud and being an unregistered security, which whatever. Um, Crony assumed the title, okay, that's one of the other things, channel social media and chat rooms, and live stream video Safeman Ask Me Anything sessions. Through these public-facing Safeman websites, white papers, and AMA sessions, the defense John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith promoted Safeman as a digital asset that was safe in light of its locked liquidity pool and would generate returns on Safeman investors through its automatic reflections and through the developer's own efforts. Between March and April, Safeman website and white papers continued to highlight Safeman's automatically locked liquidity. They also included roadmaps that outlined the steps the developers would purportedly, purportedly take to increase the value of Safeman. These included marketing and listings, multiple exchanges, the arranging of partnerships. That's every token that's ever existed. These marketing materials linked the appreciation of Safeman's price to these efforts, claiming that the developers' efforts would take Safeman's price to the moon. Safeman's trading volume and market capitalization grew rapidly throughout March and April 2021. During this time, in addition to their own promotional efforts, the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith worked to identify and pay celebrities and social media influence with large followings to promote Safeman. Defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith also participated in multiple AMAs through March. The, during these AMAs, Cronies, Nagy, and Smith, together with the others, promoted Safeman. Representative Nagy had required Safeman in, uh, oh yeah. They represented that Nagy, that Kyle, had acquired Safeman in the FAIR launch, and you continued to hold them in a development wallet that would be used to fund Safeman's development. As Smith claimed during a March 2021 AMA, after we've burnt through and gone through all of that, we don't have any Safeman. We don't have access to anything else. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't remember that. That's crazy. They really did their uh, work for this. They really did their research. Although the defendants John Caroni, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith represented to investors that they were not holding or trading Safeman for their personal benefit, those representations were false. By March 13th, Nagy had already liquidated trillions of Safeman he obtained from the Safeman liquidity pool and transferred the proceeds of those sales to the wallets he owned and controlled. At the same time, Caroni, Smith, and other Safeman insiders discussed strategies to secretly acquire and sell Safeman to enrich themselves. 
For example, on about March 13th, 2021, Crony messaged co-conspirator, a SafeMoon insider whose identity is known to the grand jury, that I just bought SafeMoon and told co-conspirator to ask defendant Thomas Smith to snag you some. The following day, co-conspirator, I asked Crony, we can buy SafeMoon or not? Nah? Crony responded, maybe no. But Crony explained that they could conceal their SafeMoon holdings and stated, you can always buy, then transfer ownership to someone. Just have a game plan to transfer it over to someone you trust. Two days later, co-conspirator at, um, one asked Crony how much you holding, and Crony responded, technically none. Oh, <laughs> I've never seen this before. The defendants, John Crony and Thomas Smith, also discussed trading strategies designed to allow them to personally profit from SafeMoon's increasing value. In or about March 2021, Crony and Smith told each day that they should sell 10... Okay, what? I haven't seen this before. Thomas Smith also discussed trading strategies designed to allow them to personally pros- profit from SafeMoon's increasing value. In or about March 2021, Crony told Smith that each j- day they should sell $10,000 worth of SafeMoon from the SafeMoon Deployer wallet. After Crony noted such sales could generate potential tax liability, he proposed a plan to avoid that liability, explained to Smith that they may need to take some of the cash and buy you an individual, a reliable company car as well. Individual 2, whose identity is known to the grand jury, was a close relative of Smith who did not work for or hold any position at SafeMoon. Smith responded to Crony stating that they needed to be wary of bank accounts reporting to IRS on 9K deposits. Without a certain, uh, within a certain period of time, the IRS would be heavy into audits if we did 9K regularly. Between March 13th, 20, oh my gosh, uh, March 16th, the defendant Kyle and Aggie continued to remove liquidity from the SafeMoon liquidity pool using SafeMoon LP tokens and continued to sell those tokens for his personal benefit. Um, wow, I can't believe they got Kyle. I really thought like Kyle was going to get away with it. That's awesome. But he's, they still haven't arrested him yet, is what I'm, from what I've seen. On or about March 16th, Nagy asked defendant John Crony, should we be honest with the team about pulling out of the LP for the project now? Oh my gosh, dude, there's a lot of details in here. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Nagy asked defendant John Crony. So Kyle asked John, should we be honest with the team about pulling out of the LP for the project now? And noted that he was getting questions about it. Crony responded, let's draft up a statement. Thomas, you and I need to talk about how to message that properly. The same day, Crony and defendants Thomas Smith discussed whether to disclose to investors their control and intended use of the tokens of the SafeMoon liquidity pool. Dang, they must have had to uh, pulled a lot of information recently. And I, I don't know how much they knew this was coming, but if John knew this was coming, he's a dumbass based on how he's been acting because it putting out the SafeMoon Futter's tears and saying winner is coming on stuff. It, the way John was posting before this happened was like he didn't see this coming. But then it clearly he's in jail <laughs> and this is the worst news possible. I cannot see how SafeMoon could ever recover from this. Even if somebody new took, taken, uh, took over SafeMoon, it's still seen as this horrible thing and an unregistered security. Um, The same day, Crony and defendants Thomas Smith discussed whether to disclose to investors their control and attendant use of the tokens in the SafeMoon liquidity pool. Crony thus suggested that they could update the SafeMoon white paper and call it a day. (laughs) Although defendants Crony now, uh, Kyle and Thomas Smith, eternally discussed their ability to and intent to use the funds from the SafeMoon liquidity pool, they did not disclose those facts to the SafeMoon investors. Rather, through the SafeMoon websites, white papers, social media posts, and AMAs, they continue to represent that the SafeMoon liquidity pools were locked and that the funds were contained therein were inaccessible to them. For example, on or about March 17th, Smith re- responded to publicly posted concerns about insider access to the SafeMoon liquidity pool. Crony message Smith, make sure you specify we won't touch the LP. During a subsequent AMA, Smith and Nagy were asked about claims that there is nothing stopping the de- developers from accessing the initial liquidity they created. In response, Smith stated that the safe liquidity was locked and that the, over time we generate more LP tokens that will also be locked, but they may use safe and LP tokens for charity and stuff. <laughs> for charity and stuff. Um, Defendants removed additional liquidity from the safe and liquidity pools and secretly traded safe for their personal benefit. By early April, hundreds of thousands of investors held SafeMoon and its trading volume and price um, volume and price increased dramatically. On April, SafeMoon recorded its then highest daily trading volume of approximately 43.96 million. 
That day, the defendants John Crony and Thomas Smith participated in a Safeman AMA where they touched the growing number of Safeman holders, addressed public concerns that Safeman was a fraudulent rug pull, and answered questions about their personal ownership and trading of Safeman. Hey, what's up, Mitch? Hey, Mitch, can you ban anybody that's uh, blatantly promoting other uh, projects? Not just talking about them, but like just blatantly, oh, you should go buy this. Um, if you can, Mitch, if you're not busy, I appreciate it, man. During the April 4, 2021 AMA, the defendants Thomas Smith told investors that Safeman was not a rug pull or a soft rug pull. As to his personal Safeman holding, Smith stated, I personally hold none because I'm a software engineer. I don't want to um, I don't want to create a situation where the, my decisions as a CTO are affected by the monetary gain of those actions, and that's why I've made that separation for myself. During the AMA, Smith further explained that he did not hold Safeman tokens because not everything is about money, guys. It's that simple. I'm not I'm not greedy. I already get paid. So I get paid enough that I'm fine. I don't, you know, we're good. I like to earn my money. I like to, you know, feel good about what I've done. Thereafter, users on Safeman's social media pages repeated Smith's claims that he owned no Safeman tokens. After the conclusion of the April 4th, 2021 AMA in the overnight hours of April 5th, Kyle transferred 513 billion Safeman to a wallet address owned and controlled by defendant Thomas Smith. The Safeman that Nagy transferred to Smith was traceable to the Safeman liquidity pool and was valued at more than $600,000 at the time. I thought it was more than that, but that's okay. Unless they looked at the wrong number or something. After receiving the Safeman from the defendant Kyle Nagy, the defendant Thomas Smith sold large quantities of that Safeman, swapping Safeman for more widely used digital asset and then sending it to an account Smith controlled at a crypto exchange one. Uh, a centralized digital asset exchange the identity of which is known to the grand jury during that time, Smith communicated about these Safeman sales with co-conspirator one, who was a Safeman community manager. You know what it seems like? It seems like they uh, got a bunch of the messages going on behind the scenes that we have not seen yet, and that it's coming out in the indictment. <clears throat> hey, thanks, Matty. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. So I haven't seen a lot of these messages. During that time, Smith communicated about these safe and sales uh, manager in charge of monitoring safe and social media platforms and chat rooms. After Smith successfully transferred the safe and sale proceeds, Smith told co-conspirator one, bro, we did it, and it's effing go time. They discussed buying luxury vehicles. After completing additional sales of safe that day, Smith told co-conspirator that basically nobody noticed Smith's sales of safe Ooh, did he really say that? So Thomas told... Whoever this other person is, I'm guessing, I think I said it was his family. Like, I don't know who that is, actually. Nobody noticed Smith's sales of Safeman. Damn, that looks really bad, Thomas. That looks really bad, dude. I have never seen that before. Have you guys seen that before? Bro, we did it. It's effing go time. And they discussed buying luxury vehicles after completing additional sales. Thomas told somebody, nobody noticed Smith's sales of Safeman. That's insane. It doesn't get any more damning than that. The same day, April 5th, the defendant Kyle Nagy used Safeman LP tokens to remove 66 trillion Safeman and 272 BNB tokens from the Safeman liquidity pool. Minutes later, Nagy transferred all 272 BNB to a wallet he controlled. Over the next two weeks, Nagy sold trillions of Safeman and BNB traceable to the Safeman liquidity pool for more than $7 million worth of stable coins and other digital assets, which he transferred to wallet addresses he owned and controlled. On or about April 9th, 2021, the defendant Kyle Nagy messaged the defendant Thomas Smith concerning the Safeman liquidity pool and told Smith that upon calculation, $5 trillion Safeman is left over from pulling out the LP. Smith asked Nagy, we pulled from the LP, and Nagy stated, initial LP was locked. I pulled from the generating LP, yes, and he told Smith, call me. Public scrutiny of the Safeman liquidity pool has increased. The defendants continued to fraudulently remove liquidity from the Safeman liquidity pool. On or about April 20, social media account with a large following posted a scam alert concerning Safeman, claiming that the owners of the Safeman smart contract could pull LP and sell tokens, creating a rug pull. Post was widely distributed across Safeman's social media platform and chat rooms. The same day, co-conspirator one messaged defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith to inform them that the current and prospective Safeman investors were flipping the F out about social media account. Oh, they were freaking out about it. Nagy sent Crony a link to the post and wrote, crash incoming. Oh my gosh, dude, this is a behind this. They have some kind of, they have all their messages. And so we're getting like behind the scenes look at what they were actually going through during this entire time that I don't think anyone has seen. In his post, the defendant John Crony disclosed that the liquidity generated with each Safeman transaction was not automatically locked. 
but instead the liquidity locking was automated, a claim contrary to the statements previously made on Safeman's websites and social media pages. In his post, Crony also disclosed for the first time that Safeman, including the defendants Kyle Nagy and Thomas Smith, retained access to the Safeman liquidity pool and would use liquidity pool as a last resort to provide Safeman to a digital asset exchange, also known as seeding for development cost of future Safeman innovations. Crony said that they will publicly go to the community and let you know if the LP was used for what and ahead of time. Oh my gosh, it's almost like somebody told us about this already. It's almost like we've been saying this for the past year. The defendants, John Crony and Thomas Smith, also led an AMA on April 21, 2021, where they addressed the claims made about their access to the safe and liquidity pool and the risk for safe and insiders executing a rug pool to defraud investors. So during this time, I'm sure I'm not sure how many of you guys remember this, but yeah, there was like this big warning in the audit about the team having access to the liquidity and the team's response to this was that they're doxxed and that if they did that they would go to jail and they're literally in jail and they did do it so it's actually hilarious that they were like no guys we wouldn't do that because we're doxxed and if we did we'd go to jail and then they went and did that and then now they're in jail <laughs> and that's you know there's another thing is like john crony talking about well everything's open and viewable on the blockchain if it wasn't this what they wouldn't have gotten caught during the AMA, Crony and Smith made the following misrepresentations to Safeman investors. Crony said, we understand the situations may require the use of LP. Use can include seeding other exchanges, creating more backbones, as well as the last resort for development costs. But that is only, honestly, we haven't had a need and we don't foresee a need, you know, in the future. So if you watched our other AMAs, you would have known uh, that the LP is a last resort. And we have publicly, sorry, basically, I'm going to sum it up. I'm not going to read the rest of these tweets. Um, basically, if we're going to do something with the LP, we'll tell you, even if it includes locking away, we'll usually do it about once a week, but we'll let you know when we do it, Thomas. Smith said, of course, we got a lot of LP tokens, and look, what we did, we locked them again and again and again. We're going to keep doing it. And then as John was saying, if something comes up that makes sense, we're going to tell you. And then we're going to you know, judge our reaction based off your reaction. It's a perfect symbiosis of the community and what we're doing. It's awesome. This was right around the time that if you have seen that video of Hank, saying the audio from hank that's in coffeezilla's video of him saying we were getting a lot of pushback about the lp not being locked and he said and and hank's own words in the audio hank says and that's what blew me away when i heard this and the fact that nobody was making a big deal about this and this was a, a call that was recorded that he didn't think other people were going to hear he said john wanted to rug the liquidity contrary to the defendants john cronies and thomas smith's representations in april 2021 concerning the safe and liquidity pool crony smith and the defendant kyle Nagy continued to remove millions of dollars worth of liquidity from the safe and liquidity pool and to secretly divert some of those funds for their own personal benefit on or about between may 6 and september the defendant thomas smith used a wallet address he owned and controlled smith wallet one to remove liquidity from the safe and liquidity pool on at least 18 occasions through those 18 liquidity removals smith removed approximately 13.4 trillion safe tokens worth more than 70 million at the time and approximately 160,000. 894 BNB tokens worth more than 80 million at the time. Smith transferred a large portion of these tokens to digital asset exchanges for Safeman businesses that was in part disclosed to Safeman investors. This has to be the BitMart deal, I believe. This is where I think, I could be wrong, this is where I think John, the whole situation where John was pulling all of that and then using BitMart to money launder or to launder the tokens. Of the tokens, Smith removed the Safeman liquidity pool using the Smith wallet one. However, he transferred at least 4,659 BNB worth more than 1.5 million at the time and 194 billion Safeman worth more than $570,000 at the time to other wallet addresses he owned and controlled. On or about between May 7th and May 8th, the defendant Smith used a second wallet address he owned controlled Smith Wallet 2 to remove liquidity from the safe and liquidity pool. Specifically, he removed 557 BNB worth more than $350,000 at that time, 4.9 billion Safeman worth more than 250000 Smith thereafter sold these Safeman tokens together with the Safeman tokens he received from the defendant Kyle Nagy for additional BNB tokens worth more than $1.7 million at the time. Smith used those BNB tokens to, among others, buy luxury sports cars and make potential invest personal investment. Shortly after Safeman's launch and continuing thereafter, the defendants John Crony Kyle Nagy and Thomas Smith successfully listed Safeman with Crypto Exchange 2, a centralized digital asset exchange, the identity of which is known to the grand jury. As a centralized exchange, the trading of Safeman at Crypto Exchange 2, as opposed to transfers of Safeman over the blockchain, would not benefit from the Safeman's reflections and liquidity pool additions unless Safeman manually provided those investors with reflections and liquidity pool additions. Yeah, it's talking about BitMart. The defendants, John Crony and Thomas Smith, worked with Crypto Exchange 2 to provide those benefits to its customers. Pursuant to agreements executed in or about April 21, SafeMoon agreed to provide Crypto Exchange 2 with SafeMoon to be distributed as reflections on Crypto Exchange 2 as liquidity pool additions. Crypto Exchange 2 agreed to spend, uh, send specific 
quantities of stable coins to Safemoon that were intended to be swapped for Safemoon and deposited in the Safemoon liquidity pool. Crony Smith and others marketed these features to current and prospective investors. Between April 23 and May 21, a wallet address owned and controlled by defendant John Crony received more than $8 million in stable coins from Crypto Exchange 2. Yep, this is a BitMart. This is what we clearly looked at, right, on the blockchain. We clearly all went and looked at BitMart, John Crony's uh, wallet receiving from BitMart millions of dollars in stablecoin. These stablecoins were supposed to be swapped for Safemoon and deposited into the Safemoon liquidity pool. Crony and the defendant, Thomas Smith, however, diverted a portion of these stablecoins into a digital asset exchange account owned and controlled by Smith. On or about July 1st, 2021, a wallet address owned and controlled by Crony sent Smith approximately $1.5 million worth of stablecoins from Crypto Exchange 2. In a turn, Smith withdrew $1.4 million in fiat currency to a bank account and transferred those funds to Crony's personal bank account. The allegations contained in paragraphs 1 through 59 are re-alleged and incorporated as if fully set forth in the paragraph, um, this is count one, in or about between March 21 and June 22, both uh, June 2022, both dates being approximately and inclusive within the Eastern District of New York and elsewhere. The defendants, John, also known as John, Kyle, Thomas, has did knowingly and willfully conspire to use and employ manipulative and deceptive devices and uh, contravances contrary to Rule 10b-5 of the Rules and Regulations of the United States Securities and Exchange Title. Employing one or more devices, schemes, and uh, I don't know that word, artifices to defraud, making one or more untrue statements of material fact and omitting to the state one or more material fa facts necessary in order to make the statements made in light of the circumstances under which they were made, not misleading, and engaging in, honor <coughs> in one or more acts Practices and courses, uh, okay, I'm just going to skip that. On or about April 2020, Crony posted a social media platform concerning the safe and liquidity pool and stated the LP is a last resort. We'll publicly go to the community and let you know if the LP will be used and what for ahead of time. Crony posted a social media platform concerning the safe and liquidity pool and stated the situations arise which may require the use of the LP. Uses include seeding other exchanges and DEXs, development costs, or future safe and innovations. Like, yeah, they flipped the script on you. They said, oh, it's locked. And they said, oh, we, we'll use it, but we'll let you know. Never let us know. And then lied to its investors and created merch about FUD, uh, Fudder's Tears, drinking Fudder's Tears. And then now John Crony, I imagine, is probably crying while in jail right now. On or about April 21, uh, during an AMA broadcast to investors in the Eastern District of New York and elsewhere, Crony stated that there were situations that may require the use of the LP. The United States hereby gives notice to defense that upon their conviction of any of these offenses charges herein, the government will seek forfeiture in accordance with the Title 18 United States Code section blah, 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 which requires any person convicted of such offenses to forfeit any property, real or personal. I don't know if I want to show that, but I guess it's public knowledge. Plaintiff Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC or Commission, alleges, beginning in March, Safeman LLC, creator Kyle Maggie, John Caroni, Thomas Smith, perpetrated a massive fraudulent scheme that generated millions through unregistered offer and sale of crypto asset security called the SafeMoon token. During the course of the fraud, SafeMoon token's market capitalization skyrocketed to billions of dollars in only two months. That value quickly plummeted when the scam was discovered, leading to significant losses to investors. That was another one of the hidden messages. If you guys didn't see it earlier, Kai, they the team was freaking out when somebody came out and were saying that the team had access to the liquidity pool and Kyle was telling them this is some of their hidden message or behind the scene messages that that there was going to be a massive sell off and I think that that was probably something that was going on in the team's mind is we have to take advantage of the LP before the investors do because if the whales sell and plummet it we won't be able to pull anything out I'm sure that was a thought that went through their mind whenever they were pulling out of the LP was like, we have to pull it before somebody else does. That value quickly plummeted when the scam was discovered, leading to significant loss is to investors. Meanwhile, defendants profited by misappropriating from the project crypto assets worth tens of millions of dollars. Between March 12th and April 20th, the trading volume of the SafeMoon token on crypto asset trading platforms also skyrocketed, and its market price soared by over 55,000%. Total market value of SafeMoon token also experienced a meteoric rise to over $5.7 billion. Ultimately, more than 2.8 million unique addresses have held SafeMoon tokens since its inception on the distributed ledger, uh, distributed digital ledger or blockchain in which it was represented. As a part of their scheme, defendants used so-called liquidity pool. You know what's weird is all the influencers that talked about this as well, like that were paid because that was like Jake Paul, uh, you know, that huge list of people. Who is that one guy? Keemstar. I, I feel like you might be in trouble. I don't know. 
As part of their scheme, defendants use so-called liquidity pool through which SafeMoon tokens holders were able to swap their SafeMoon tokens for BNB tokens. Another crypto asset security, which is associated with the Binance Smart Chain blockchain, now known as the BNB chain. This exchange would take place through a so-called liquidity pool, the SafeMoon LP, which consisted of a smart contract, generally speaking, self-executing computer code. That is a way to make it sound real simple. The RAN ran on the so-called decentralized exchange known as PancakeSwap. SafeMoon LP allowed users to swap SafeMoon tokens with BNB tokens, and as marketing materials, white paper, and website, Nagy represented that each SafeMoon token transaction would be a subject to a 10% tax. Okay, yeah, we got that. Critically, Nagy represented a marketing material and white paper website that these retained asset would be locked and inaccessible for at least four years. Smith and Caroni repeated and disseminated this, these false representations in social media posts and other communications with the public. This is what this is what a lot of people were trying to get away from. It was like, you say it's locked, you can't just magically say it's unlocked. And they said, well, no, they said that. And then they said they'd use it, you have to pay for stuff, is what people would say. Like, you have to pay for the cost of stuff. And it's like, not through theft, <laughs> not through theft, you, you can't do that, right? And then they said they would tell us. And they there's never a post saying, hey, we use the liquidity to pay for this, this, and this. They never did that, right? They lied at every point. <laughs> Uh, according to defendants, this purportedly safety feature would protect assets from being misappropriated or having that rug pulled in crypto asset market terms. What the defendants failed to disclose, however, was that whenever tokens were deposited into the SafeMoon LP from 5% tax, the defendants received liquidity provider tokens, LP tokens as a result. Accordingly, as defendants well known, the assets in the SafeMoon LP were not locked because the LP tokens were allowed the defense to withdraw retained assets from the SafeMoon LP at, which, at will, which in fact uh, is what the defendants repeatedly did. In direct contravention to their public rep mis, uh, representations, the defendants repeatedly raided the retained assets from the SafeMoon LP by redeeming LP tokens they received when the tokens were deposited into the SafeMoon LP as part of the 5% tax on each SafeMoon token transaction. The defendants claimed in their marketing, which, you know what would have saved all of this? Just a 2% marketing tax, 2% to the team. <laughs> they would have gotten so much money and that wouldn't have saved all of that, but it would have saved a lot if Kyle if he just, when he made a, such a stupid contract, when he copied B-Token, all he had to do was put this tax to pay for the team funding. Nope. That led to all of this. As the SafeMoon token grew exponentially in value, the defendants used their LP tokens to redeem tens of millions of dollars worth of tokens from the SafeMoon LP, which they then used for various purposes, including the manipulation of the SafeMoon token market, businesses, expenses, investments, and unrelated companies and personal uses such as to purchase luxury homes, McLaren sports cars, and extravagant travel. Uh, it became public that the defense had the unfettered ability to remove assets from the safe and LP. The safe and token price plummeted nearly 50%. That's what I would love to see is what percentage of the price are they available or are they uh, accountable to, like did they cause to happen? And that was something that, like when I was researching that I was like, oh, you guys are it probably wasn't just some whales taking profits it was you guys it was you guys pulling from the lp you guys destroyed the price and it, it might have even risen even more in price if you guys hadn't have done that what safeman could have been if uh that hadn't happened on or about april 21st 2021 after it became public defendants had the unfettered ability to remove the assets from the safe and LP. the safe and token price plummeted 50 percent after this plunge the defendants engaged in another scheme to manipulate the price of safe and token through carefully timed asset purchases by engaging in conduct um blah 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 defendants will continue to violate the federal securities law unless they are restrained and enjoined by this court enjoined defendants from engaging in transactions acts practices and courses of business alleged in this complaint transaction acts practices and courses of business similar purport and object the court has personal jurisdiction over defense and venue is proper in this district uh, district pursuant to section 22 because among other things some of the acts and transactions which defendants engaged that constitute violations of the federal securities laws occurred in this district for example as alleged here in defendants offered and sold securities to investors located in this district in unregistered transactions in addition this court has personal jurisdiction over defense because Defendants engaged in conduct with the United States that constitute significant steps in furtherance of the violations of the federal securities laws alleged in this complaint and or further because defendants, whether within or outside of the United States, engaged in conduct that had foreseeable substantial effects within the United States. In connection with the con conduct alleged in this complaint, defendants directly and indirectly, singly or in con uh, concert with others, have made use of the means 
or instrumentalities of interstate commerce, the means or instruments of transportation or communication in interstate commerce, the mails and the facilities of national securities exchange, namely that through the defense use of the internet and use banking system when engaging the acts. Hmm. Safe and LLC was formerly the Safe and Project launch was used to conduct early business operations. The LLC's members were a crony Nagy and Tano LLC, of which Smith was a 10% owner. Safe and LLC initially operated via a three person board consisting of crony Nagy and Smith. They just went on the wildest ride of their lives. They went from like kids working on video games to like, hey, I created this, My one of our friends created this crypto to like, oh, okay, cool. I got to be part of that crypto. Oh, we're making millions of dollars. Everybody loves me and worships me. Let's pull out that money. I've got a girlfriend with a $30,000 apartment over here. I'm making this much money. People are worshiping me. It's like to, oh, you quit. Oh, you got fired. Oh, they're taking from the LP. Oh, Coffee's made a video on me. Oh, we're in jail. What a crazy two to three years this has been for these guys. With its principal place of business in Pleasant Grove, Utah, Safeman US LLC was owned and controlled by Crony. After formation, Safeman U.S. LLC was used in connection with the Safeman token operations. Safeman U.S. LLC never registered any class of securities with the commission. Nagy, age 35, was a resident of Vero Beach, Florida, who was responsible for the creation of the Safeman token. Congress enacted the Securities Act nearly a century ago to regulate the offer and sale of securities. Contrast to the commercial principle of caveat emptor, Congress established a regime of full and fair disclosure requiring those who offer and sell securities to the investing public to provide sufficient accurate information to allow investors to make informed decisions before they invest. Oh, yeah. The turbines. <laughs> the turbines, man. What happened to the turbines? I want my turbine, bro. Safeman also tweeted imagery and language associated with traditional stock market investment, further linking the Safeman token's prospects to that of traditional stock market investment. Uh, Nagy falsely and repeatedly represented that the asset retained in the Safeman LP were locked and inaccessible. Significant risk with a certain crypto asset offerings is the potential for developers who control associated risks. Like, yeah, to rug it, yeah. 100% community owns. Dev burned his tokens. Oh my god. He did not. He didn't burn his tokens. He just stole, he just kept stealing it. That's where it's weird because, you know, like, I, I talked to people who know Kyle and they were like, he seems like a good guy. And it's like, no, I'm pretty sure he just was scamming people and then he got lucky in the sense that he convinced a lot of people of a scam and that scam was safe man. And then they tried to make it seem legit, but then they scammed it. And now a bunch of people got scammed. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. Um, automatic LP. Yep. It is. There it is. Every trade contributes toward automatically generating liquidity toward pancake swap. Uh, holders can earn passive income. Yep. That, that was it. LP locked DX Locker for four years. Dev burned all tokens. Oh man, what a scammer. To say he burned his tokens while he was pulling from the LP is crazy. You can literally see if you pull it, if you haven't looked at it, it literally says remove liquidity. <laughs> like that's the function if you go look at the wallet. Nagy Newer was reckless in not knowing that these statements were materially false and leading. Nagy programmed the safe and LP code, meaning that he knew that it, there was no such LP token lock mechanism as he falsely told the public. Safe and token smart contract source code, which Nagy posted. That is so funny, dude, that this, this wasn't even a grand idea. It was just some dude just throwing out some stupid ass idea with some terrible coding, and it became what it became. That's so funny. Cronin Smith at various times also disseminated the false information that assets held in the safe and LP were protected from misappropriation. They, yep, they said the same thing. As John was saying, if something comes up that makes sense, we're going to tell you and then we're going to judge our reaction based on your reaction. Yeah, we already read that. All right. Oh, yeah, th here's that chart that I was looking for. This says that Nagy pulled $408,000, which I don't think that's right, of safe moon. Oh, I guess maybe it's not something else he pulled as well saying that thomas pulled 75 million and that crony pulled dude how much money was in there <laughs> that's insane those numbers are really hard to understand 123 million none of the defendants publicly disclosed to the safeman community that they would withdraw assets from the safeman lpv1 for personal use Smith used 58,000 BNB to purchase more Safeman tokens in the Safeman LPV2, causing a dramatic increase in the value of the Safeman tokens relative to BNB. As Smith informed Crony just after purchasing about 1 trillion Safeman tokens for, this is where they have the behind the scenes messages that we're getting as this comes out, which is pretty awesome. 
people are going to geek out over that buy I just did to make up the difference in a good way. I did a 13K BNB buy to make the difference on the lost safement tokens from the 10% tax. Should have shot the price up. We have 45,000 BNB remaining. Clean 30 million and be <laughs> Dude, what were these people doing? You can't just be messing with $30 million just nonchalantly. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Uh, 30 million USDT referring to the crypto asset known as Tether. Yep, and coming. It's a pretty good day and the price is up. That's where John got his Tether, right? <clears throat> Safeman's investors immediately noticed the dramatic price impact of Smith's large trades. Less than an hour later, Smith used 22,000 BNB, 13.5 million to purchase about 1.5 trillion Safeman from the V2 LP. Smith used another 25 million. So what that did is it, it caused the price to go up, and we all went like, "Oh, this is amazing!" We don't know what John's or what Thomas is doing, but the price went up, and then the whales would be like, "Oh, sweet! I'm going to take some profits," and then the price would go below what it was, and we'd be like, "Ah, oh. <laughs> but that's what happened. They took from it, and then the whales got some." And we got it hyped, and then nothing happened. And the price went down, down even further. Through this series of transactions on May 12, Crony and Smith created the artificial appearance of active trading and attempted to raise the price of Safeman tokens for the purpose of inducing purchase of Safeman tokens by others. Wow. Crony wrote to Smith, do a V2 BNB buy, meaning purchase Safeman tokens from Safeman LP V2 using BNB removed from Safeman LP1 if that will increase the price. <clears throat> Crony asked Smith if we can do it a little slower this time around. Smith assured Crony that he would plug it through the day starting when I get back all the way to midnight. This in contrast to Smith's conduct on May 12th when he bought nearly 35 million in safe tokens about one hour. Crony gave Smith detailed instructions on how to trade the safeman token. For example, Crony told Smith, let's create a price floor. Crony also asked Smith how big of a yeet is needed to pump the price to five. Smith assured Crony that he can just thrash it, just under the diminishing returns until we hit five NP. No problem. Oh my gosh, dude. It's not even, it, you know what this just, it's not even like they were trying to be legitimate. It doesn't feel, it just sounds like they were just scamming and they knew they were. Crony replied, hopefully, in all reality, the best thing to do would be to counter all the sells, then add 26% to the price. Crony told Smith how much safe tokens to purchase and when, including detailed instructions on such as a 50 BNB buy every five minutes. Initially, then 200 BB, uh, BNB times three when the 50 BNB t times three till done. These instructions were followed by corresponding transactions in which Smith executed the manipulative strategy discussed with Crony. In total, the defendants used about 58,000 BNB removed from the LPV1 to purchase safe tokens from the LPV2 with the intent of manipulating the price of the safe tokens higher and as their internal private conversations show in order to attract investors to buying safe tokens. None of the defendants publicly disclosed to the Safeman community that they would withdraw assets from the Safeman LPV1 to purchase additional Safeman tokens or manipulate its market price. 